Welcome back to the WAC Podcast, Eric Danner and Kendra Sheehan. We are now joined by Casey Keeler, the head coach at Sam Houston. Coach, uh, welcome back to the show. I got to imagine Battle of the Piney Woods Week uh, is is crazy for you. Kind of tell us a little bit about maybe what's what's different about this week as you prepare for Stephen F. Austin at the NRG Stadium this Saturday. When I use the word hate, I try to save it for like world hunger, like we hate world hunger. No, there's a hatred here for about four hours on a Saturday afternoon uh, in NRG Stadium. Uh, you have two programs just that really do not get along. I mean, it is really pretty cool. Um, the intensity, the the passion, you know, the fact that you're playing not only for yourself, but you're playing for all the guys who've played in this game before. It, it's really cool. And, and I, I tell the story about my first battle of Piney Woods. Uh, my wife and my son were, he was heading to, to, to LA to move. And so she was driving with him and they, the ride was not going well. You can imagine, you know, it's a long ride and whoever's driving doesn't like how the other one's driving and not driving. And so I get a phone call from them. I'm like, listen, just, I hope you are alive when I talk to you next, but I have to worry about this game. I mean, I'm starting to feel the intensity of this game coming on. You could just feel a building. And then after the game, we were fortunate enough to win. I remember walking off the field with our athletic director, Bobby Williams, and saying, you didn't do this game justice. Like, this is really crazy. Like, the fans in the stands and the play on the field, I mean, it's there's a lot of energy and a lot of passion. It's pretty cool. And we, just like Stephen F. Austin, recruit this game. This is a go play in a big-time atmosphere go play in a pro stadium, go play in a rivalry game, one of the longest rivalries in the country, one of the top four in Texas. And um, it's something you'll remember forever. Now, you, this is the 96th meeting of these two programs. Sam Houston has won the last 10. And this is something we talked about before the season that, you know, depending on how scheduling goes in the future with Sam Houston transitioning to FBS, that this could be the last battle of the Piney Woods as we know it. And so how important is it? You win, you might've won 10, but if you don't go away with the trophy this time, you know, what does that mean for the program? How big is this exact game? For right. Whoever wins, it, whoever wins is keeping the trophy. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to play them and they're not going to play us. It doesn't make sense unless we're both at the same level in terms of you want to have a rivalry game with a, with a team in a division below you. It, it really would not be good business. Uh, so this is the last time. And, you know, part of me is excited because I just like to get this win and can say I never lost uh, Stephen F. Um but also, you know, part of me is like, wow, what what a great tradition we're losing and what a great rivalry. And uh, I mean, I have tremend tre tremendous respect for Colby. He does such a great job uh, with his players and and uh, you know how how good the program has gotten. You know, I appreciate uh, you know playing a great opponent like them. Coach, uh, we talked to you back at uh, Football Media Day at the Woodlands uh, back in July, and and I know there were were some questions as far as how the team would look this year as you do the transition to FBS. Jordan Yates uh, came in. Uh, we, we saw one of the most spectacular plays uh, we've seen uh, actually in the two years since WAC brought the football back with the flip into the end yep. zone uh, play. I, I know he was injured uh, in part of that game and he had some other guys banged up. Do, do you have an idea what uh, who, who's going to be uh, playing quarterback and who, who some of the other guys that might be back this week are? Yeah, you know, um... What an amazing play. And you can see one of the reasons why we went with Jordan is that tremendous athleticism. Um, but Keegan, you know, was actually going to come in during that game. You know, we we had made a decision. He was going to get the second series uh, of um, the second half if we didn't think Jordan was playing as well as we needed him to play. And, you know, I, I really think I'm a good football team. And I really like this team. We've struggled at the quarterback spot. And, you know, when they touch the ball 100% of times, when your quarterback's not playing well, no one's playing well. And so I think part of it is the fact that um, I should have probably done a better job um, bringing Jordan along in terms of maybe getting Keegan in a couple of series. Because sometimes when you just get off the side, just get off to the sideline and just see someone else playing, you know, just to kind of get your breath. 
Um, and, you know, we just, you know, we, we realized that, you know, he was only here for a spring. Now, he won the battle during training camp. Uh, but, you know, when he got off to a slow start, uh, we didn't want to have a quick, a quick, uh, you know, hook. And we gave him some rope and, and eventually we said, OK, you know, Keegan has to go in. And I thought Keegan came in, gave us great energy and, and got the offense moving again. So um, Jordan went down with, in, with some injuries and he's all banged up. Um, but we think he still has a future. And, uh, you know, Keegan is just that steady Eddie guy. Um, you know, ball comes out of his hand really quick, makes really good decisions, athletic enough that he can make plays, very sort of sneaky athletic, where you see him make some plays, you know, oh, I didn't know that guy could do that. And he can. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I think I have a good football team. I think the quarterback spots, we've been struggling a little bit and we're going to get that squared away. This past weekend, you pick up your first win. You put 27 points on the board. And you were talking about the quarterback, how you were struggling. Do you feel like that this previous game allowed your offense to kind of get the spark that you guys needed to really get rolling and allow some of those veteran receivers and running backs to really get involved heading into this big rivalry battle? Yeah, see, this is such a unique situation. We didn't play a lot of our guys last week. We're redshirting them. And it's the opportunity to move to Conference USA. And it's like, you know, so that's where we got a lot of balls in the air, a lot of moving parts, nine game schedule, not ideal, three bye weeks, not ideal, not be able to play for a championship. You know, my first time in 29 years, the head coach, my, my very first meeting and talk about, you know, us winning to win a national championship. It was us playing for the standard. So there, again, you know, we're, we're got a lot of things going on. Now this game, no one's redshirting. This game, everybody who's, who's able to play will get out there and play. But um, I, I think, you know, I think Keegan will have, if we can run the ball like we started to run the ball last week, that should really take a lot of pressure off the quarterback. And then you have Ife, and you have Noah, and you have Cody Crest. I got three of the best receivers in the country. So hope you're hoping to get some one-on-one -on -one matchups with those guys and, and how Keegan get those guys the ball. So, um, yeah, we've had an interesting start. I think this game here can kind of get us, you know, uh, back on track. And uh, again, I like our team. It's just uh, a lot of moving parts with all the things going on this year. Coach last year was, was we mentioned 96 battles of the piney wood uh, last year might've been as classic a game as we've seen. You guys were down much of the game. Keegan shoemakers playing quarterback as Eric Schmidt was injured for that one. And Keegan lead you on a, uh, on a comeback and, and you guys win. How much do you draw on, on last year's games or on this win streak, or, or do you kind of look at it as those were 10 separate wins and it's not one big, long win streak here? No, I, I think we, we draw off those things. I mean, I, it's, it's, our philosophy always is obstacles or opportunities. And so, you know, not having Eric in that game was just an opportunity, an opportunity for our team to kind of rally around somebody else. You know, we had a game against James Madison. We were down 21 points at halftime, just an opportunity. Let's see if we can go get seven points. And if we get seven, I like our chances. We got seven. And you could just see the pressure. In those two ball games, Eric, there was like a 97% chance of us losing those games at some point in that game. And if you take the national championship, it was 96% when they scored with six minutes left to go in the game. That we had like a 96. So this team has just done a really good job. And we're trying to get that carryover of having the blinders on. We're not playing the next staff. If something positive happens, feed off of it. If something negative happens, let it go, move on to the next play. So um, I think what we did last year will definitely help kind of, you know, set the tone for what we want to do this year. And you know, if you, you look at the history of this game, there's a lot of close games, even when the teams aren't evenly matched. And there's a lot of, you know, someone's winning at halftime and but loses the game. I bet, I bet since I've been here, more than 50% of the time I've been losing at halftime in this game. It's just one of those games where throw the records out. You know, it doesn't really matter. It, and both of us have started off a little bit slower than we, than we wanted to. You're going to get two very passionate teams that believe they can kind of resurrect their season around this rivalry game. Sam Houston has won 59 times 
out of the 34, 34 losses and two ties. So you guys certainly have the better over Stephen F. Austin. I wanted to ask you, do you have the, uh, the trophy behind you in that trophy case? We, we have a, we no, we actually have a, a, a case out. Um, okay. With- I was hoping to make an appearance on the podcast. Uh, No, no, it's out there, (laughs) but it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to go to the band and and play the fight song and raise the trophy over your head. And, and then afterwards, everyone's taking pictures with the trophy, like the O-line and the defensive backs and uh, all the trainers. And so it's a big deal. This is a big deal. And as I said earlier, I know it's, it's a game that we always recruit. Like, it's like you get a chance to play in this amazing, amazing rivalry. Not everyone has a game like this. And so, like I said, part of me is disappointed that we won't ever play this game again. And part of me will be relieved if I can get that win because <laughs> it is a game that, boy, there's a enormous a lot of, an, an enormous amount of pressure because you feel the weight of all your alums. You feel the weight of all the guys who wear the orange in the past, you know, going into that ball game. And what our alums will do is they'll come down prior to the game and they'll actually line the tunnel and you can hear them in the locker room prior to coming out. And, you know, I'm sure a number of them have had a couple too many adult beverages and (laughs) some of them are crying and they are just screaming like they're cheering you on. And it's like they all want to play one more snap. And if they're going to play one more snap, they want to play in that game. Because that's the game that meant so much to them when they played here. And so they translate that into us going out and, and performing. Uh, so, it's again, it's very unique. Um, and it's something that, um, you know, hope a lot of people come and watch because it's a special game. Coach, last time you guys were on the field, uh, you beat Commerce. And second half, Zach Herbacek, your running back, redshirt freshman, really came on, had over 130 yards uh, rushing. Did you, uh, was he discovered in that game or is this uh, something you, you kind of knew he had in him? Oh, no, I mean, like Zach was a big time recruit for us. Like, you know, I think, I think he got a concussion, maybe the last game of his senior year, or if he wouldn't have, he would have set the record for the most yards in the history of Texas football for, 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 uh, for West Texas. Um, so you're talking about like a really, don't mind my lights just went out. I wasn't moving around enough. We, we, conserve, <laughs> we conserve energy here. You know, our, our, our electric grid is not the greatest. So we conserve <laughs> energy here. Um, but no, so Zach is a guy that's really dynamic. And, uh, you know, we, you know, I'm so happy that he got that opportunity. And he's kind of showed, you can see in practice, he's got that confidence now, you know, which I think he right now. So I think I have a really good one-two punch. And for us to win this game, it's going to be really, really simple. We got to run the football. And if we can run the football, those three wideouts will have opportunities. If we can't run the football and they can kind of sit back and just play some zone and then, then we'll, we'll, we'll struggle a little bit, but Zach is going to be a big part of this game plan. Him and he and Des are, are uh, really critical with that offensive line to, uh, you know, kind of get us going. Fourth game of the season, you've had an opportunity to play a power five opponent in Texas A&M ranked sixth at the time. Where do you feel like your defense is at? Is it where you expect them to be? They've had an opportunity, you know, they held Texas A&M to just one score each quarter. Do you feel like you like where they're at or what are you kind of your expectations for the defense moving forward for the rest of the season? Yeah, you know, we've lost two of the best players in, in my mind in the country, unfortunately, on the defensive side. So uh, Markel Perry um tore his peck and just got operated on and shame for markel you know he was the the uh preseason defensive player of the year uh and in the whack going into it and in that a&m game he had four tackles for losses in the a&m game i mean he was the best player on the field in the a&m game so uh he's out but great news for him he gets a chance to redshirt and come back and then sincere jackson uh, one of our linebackers who's just a phenomenal football player. Um, same thing, you know, he got a shoulder. So we lost two of those, you know, two of our best players uh, on on defense. But uh, overall, I think we've played really, really pretty sound on defense. And uh, we don't have the guys up front that we once did. I mean, I think that we had the best defensive line maybe maybe ever in FCS football, you know, with, with Joe Wallace and Jahari Kay and, and – um, 
you know, it, it was uh, it was a group that, um, you know, could really come off the ball and, and, and sort of dominate. And the only reason we – one of the reasons we beat North Dakota State was we could control that run game a little bit, which is really hard to do. And we had some, you know, some great guys up front. But uh, all in all, I think we're playing pretty well on defense. I think we have uh, – we've replaced some of the guys up front and they're playing solid on the defensive line. Um, you know, Trevor Williams is just all over the field. Um, you know, like, like he always is. And uh, I think we have a pretty good secondary. So um, it's going to be a good contest because they have some weapons offensively that they've been a little hit or miss, but uh, their wide out number two is special. He's just a special, special player. And we can't let him beat us because they're going to try to find all different sorts of ways to get the ball uh, in his hands. Well, Coach, uh, we want to thank you for taking some time out and visiting with us, especially uh, on such a big week. I know you have a, a luncheon on Friday and obviously all the fanfare going out at Energy Stadium this week. And we'll be actually Kendra's going to be there. I'll so see we'll, you uh, there. Yeah, I'll be on the sidelines. So I'll see you. Yeah, this uh, is the kind of week you, you put your cot in your office and you say, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm living here because a lot of stuff going on, a lot of <laughs> excitement. We have a, we have a fan uh, a fire fest here on Thursday. We'll break out the fireworks and the team will come out and, and uh, have a lot of fun. So, yeah, a lot going on. And it's, it's again, these rivalry games is what makes college football so special. All right. That is Casey Keeler, the head football coach at Sam Houston. Thanks for listening to the WAC Podcast. Thanks for listening to the WAC Podcast. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And check out our website at WACsports.com.